you know, I, I said to move the bonfire somewhere else, and out of nowhere, Smokey Bear shows up and hugs me. So you noticed some wildfire hazards and moved your bonfire to a safer location. Yeah. Yeah, that's Smokey, all right. He likes it when people help prevent wildfires. It hits him close to home. Not everybody gets the hug, my friend. So that's pretty special to get a hug from Smokey Bear. Ha, huh, so it was him. Hey, guys, I told you it was Smokey. Okay, well, congratulations, my friend. And thanks for calling. There are many ways to prevent a wildfire. Learn how you can do your part at SmokeyBear.com. Only you can prevent wildfires. Sponsored by the U.S. Forest Service, Ad Council, and your state forester. Hope you enjoyed your meal. And I just want to say, he's lucky to have a brother like you. Lucky? Caring for my brother is far from easy. Waking up every day, lifting him from the bed to the wheelchair to the car to get him to therapy on time. It's no small task between the doctors and the diagnosis, but nothing can disable this love. This is my big brother, my hero. He's part of me, like my arms and legs. So I'll be his. <laughs> See, there's no time for tired. This starts again tomorrow. He'll be waiting for me. I wake up for him. I know he needs me, but I'm the lucky one. Even though I need help now and then. If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community. Or call 877-333-5885. Caregiving Resource Center. Support for your strength. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. People been saying to your friend, get a different face. And posting on their feed, they're super ugly. The things they say to them online are cruel and they're not true. So tell your friend, I'll stand up for you. Don't worry, I know what to do. Oh, 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 oh. Tell the world I see. With an emoji. Stop the know someone who's being bullied online? Send the witness emoji. It looks like an eye in a speech bubble, and it's in the symbol section near the clocks in your phone. You'll let the world know it isn't cool, and you'll let your friend know you care. Learn more about the witness emoji at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. It may be hard to believe, but people just like you are already saving money. Feedthepig.org makes it easy. Their simple savings plan teaches you how to start saving without going overboard. So you don't need to mooch off your friends. You gonna finish that grape? You mean the one in my mouth? You don't need to stop buying the necessities. What you're smelling is a natural musk. Ew. You don't need to be a medical test subject. How do you feel? Mostly okay. I... <laughs> Sometimes, though. <laughs> you don't need to get a second job as a stuntman. You just need an internet connection. Don't get left behind. Start your personal savings plan with the tips and tools on feedthepig.org. That way, you don't need to sell your soul to the devil. Fifteen bucks is the best I can do. All right, deal. Brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. When is the best time to talk to your family about staying in touch during a disaster? When floodwaters reach your door? When wildfires are engulfing the edge of your neighborhood or an earthquake is destroying buildings. When a tornado is tearing through town or a hurricane strikes. Or is the best time perhaps today? During a disaster, you may not be able to stay in touch with your family or friends as easily as you think. And it's not always as simple as using your cell phone. That's why now is the time to take action. Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. 
Do current market conditions have you nervous? Our experienced team of financial professionals at Heritage Harbor Financial Associates understands that no two investors are alike. We all have different goals, needs, and appetites for risk. That's why the one-size-fits-all approach does not work, especially when planning for retirement. At Heritage Harbor Financial Associates, we analyze your unique investment style so that you can work toward your individual retirement goals on your terms. Heritage Harbor Financial Associates can help you take steps to reach your retirement goals by providing a wide array of financial products to fit your needs, even for the risk adverse. Give us a call at 631-331-6599 to learn more or to set up an appointment with one of our financial professionals. You can also find us on the web at hhfa.org or on Facebook at facebook.com slash hhfa.org. Our number again is 631-331-6599. That's 631-331-6599. Investments in stock bonds and mutual funds and variable annuities are not FDIC insured and are subject to fluctuation in value market risk, including loss of principal heritage, Harbor Financial Associates, offer securities through AXA Advisors, LLC, New York, New York, member FINRA, SIPC, annuity and insurance products offered through AXA Network, LLC. Be fearless at MMA Long Island and Seituha Karate. Located at 28 Cold Court in Ronkonkoma, MMA Long Island is the martial arts school for you if you want to learn combat-proven techniques. Build confidence, discipline, and self-esteem while learning real martial arts to fight back against bullies, predators, and peer pressure. MMA Long Island offers group and private lessons for all ages and levels in traditional goji-ru karate, MMA, and self-defense. MMA Long Island is one of Long Island's most affordable martial arts schools. There are no promotion, belt, or membership fees, and family discounts are available. All classes are taught by 7th degree black belt Sensei John Benedict with over 30 years teaching experience. So whether you want to get in the ring or protect yourself and your family, MMA Long Island can help you reach your goals. Visit MMALongIsland.com. That's MMALongIsland.com or call or text 516-381-9660. That's 516-381-9660. Edward Lehman has been a trusted insurance advisor for over 16 years with insurance solutions for auto, home, commercial, life, and retirement. He's located at 54 Sunnyside Boulevard, Suite H in Plainview. That's just 1,000 feet south of 495. Local agent, local advice. The time to think about insurance is before you need it. So do yourself a favor and before you pay your next insurance bill, give Ed and his team a call. 516-935-935. 3900 or visit them online at www.allstate.com OEL. Edward H. Lehman Insurance is your trusted insurance advisor. Take a look under your bed. Find stuff under there? What about jobs? No? Now try your basement. There's a pair of overalls that overall you're not so into anymore. A perfectly good laptop that hasn't sat in your lap in months. And even more stuff, but still no jobs? Well, you really have both. See, stuff is defined as household articles considered as a group. Sometimes this stuff is no longer needed. Wait, no longer needed? That can't be right. Because remember those jobs you were looking for? Those are really needed, and they're the stuff inside your stuff. Even inside that winter coat that moved with you to Phoenix. Our job is to unlock those jobs, and it starts when you donate your stuff to your local Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill, we sell your stuff to provide job training for people right here in your community. So just by teaming up with Goodwill, you help create jobs. And isn't that worth parting with the leftover guitar from your 80s cover band? Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. Find your nearest donation center at Goodwill.org. A message from Goodwill and the Ad Council. It is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Oh! In the field, number 70! We're talking about practice. Hello, you play to win the game. The Yankees are champions of baseball. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Three, two, one, happy 2000! No time on the clock. The Patriots have won Super Bowl 36. Jordan open. Chicago with the lead. Worldwide Sports Radio Network presents Below the Mark. Hello, Long Island, New York, and around the country. This is Below the Mic. I'm your host, Daryl Marks, and my co-host, Mr. Tidy Whitey Man himself, Speedy Petey. Remember, you can call us at 631-500-0548. Again, it's 631 Five hundred zero five four eight. 
Remember, you can go to our website at www.worldwidesportsradio.com and you can download our app. Yes, you can. What do you have to do? Well, you got to go to iOS, which is Apple, WWSRN, or Android, Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Speedy, how was your snowstorm? Did you enjoy it? Uh, not really, because it was grueling to shovel everything. It took about two and a half hours. Plus, the my grandparents were getting an uh, getting an oil change to get more heat into the house, so I had to I do a path for them. So it was grueling, but uh, grueling. I, I've never I've two never and a half heard, hours it took. I've never heard of a word when when it comes to snow shoveling to be grueling. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's backbreaking work. Obviously, it could kill the hell out of your legs and your knees. We've seen this and. Yesterday, with my neck situation, I got the opportunity to watch my landlord snowplow me out. That's what I saw. And, I mean, I did a couple of things on the uh, the stairs over here, uh, trying to fix up the stairs and make sure that the foot of snow is outside uh, better than looking in, if you know what I'm talking about. But uh, all in all, uh, we're through this snowstorm. It was a terrible terrible snowstorm and hopefully now moving forward we can talk about the super bowl but we do this every single wednesday for below the mic speedy sports and entertainment news dallas mavericks could land russell westbrook in a blockbuster trade hmm. i don't know about a blockbuster but i can't see russell westbrook getting traded unless kp or Luka Doncic is involved with it. I can't see it. Yeah, that's not going to happen. There's too cash strapped as it is to afford that kind of contract. Why would the Bears or why the Bears could be good fit for Derek Carr? How many times do we talk about Derek Carr getting traded? Last year, year before, ever since John Gruden take over the Oakland Raiders, and he had a great season, a sensational season this year. He was one of the best quarterbacks in the league, and now they're talking about trading him again. Yeah, I don't, again, this is another old news type thing. I don't think the Raiders are going to trade Derek Carr. I mean, the Bears make a lot of sense if they do want to try to explore that kind of option because the Raiders need a lot of defense, and the Bears have a lot of defense. But I still don't see it happening. Ah, leaked text messages claim that Andrew Luck is coming back to the Colts. Wow, that's huge. If that ever happens, uh, the Colts will solidify themselves in the AFC and solidify themselves moving forward, really, in the NFL as one of the top teams in the NFL. I mean, Andrew Luck coming back behind that offensive line and the way this defense played this year, sensational story, if they're, that's true. They're easily a top three team in the AFC if Andrew Luck comes back, maybe second. NFL rumors and news, Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid could be the NFL's Tom Brady and Bill Belichick of the 2020s. Mm. What do you say about that, Speedy? It's the best chance of anybody, I would say, with that quarterback that they have in Mahomes. Locked up for 10 years, getting that huge contract that he has. How about Salah and Watson? I like the sound of that. I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> NFL PAs, uh, Demarius Smith says there's no COVID-19 scenario where the Super Bowl would be moved. Well, yes, there is. If there's an outbreak and 5,000 people come down <laughs> With COVID-19, well, it would be moved. What do you think? Speaking? So far, there have only been two. A center, Daniel Kilgore for the Chiefs, and one of their defensive players. Like one of the defensive linemen got it. But that's really been it so far. So, so far, so good. So I don't see where it would be moved either. But you're right. If it's massive, it's massive. Carlson Wentz prefers Eagles trade him this offseason. I'm not surprised. Now, Peterson is gone, and they tried to make him happy, but I don't think he's happy. I don't think they can relinquish or save what they did to Carlson Wentz this all, this regular season. I think he wants out, and I think there's a lot of teams that would be interested in Carlson Wentz. Yeah, I, again, I don't think you're going to get much back if you're the Eagles right now. It's going to be very hard to move that contract as it is. Uh, the dead cap hit of cutting him is much worse, so just try to trade him. If not, again, hang on to him. Maybe he does get a spark with a new coach. Who knows? Taysom Hill must take a step back if the Saints re-sign Jameis Winston. Uh, I think this is a huge story. Taysom Hill that has been saying that he wants to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. Now, all of a sudden, Jameis Winston is their number one target. I, I still don't think that Jameis Winston is their number one target. I still think Sam Darnold is a guy that they'd be very interested in. But we'll see what happens. Regardless, Taysom Hill kind of had his audition this year. Played well at times, but really didn't have enough to show that he's a capable starting quarterback. Uh, NBA rumors. 
Bulls Zach Levine sounds off on a grudge with Knicks Tom Thibodeau. Now, obviously, everybody's been hearing that uh, there's uh, a possible trade with the New York Knicks and the Chicago Bulls for Zach Levine, uh, a superstar player that's really transitioning his game as a superstar player right now in the NBA. Uh, what do you think about this story, Speedy? I don't like. I would. I do not like it if I'm the Knicks to go after Levine. If they have already had this kind of issue in the past, I don't necessarily want to bring that Timberwolves, I guess, down downward mantra back. And also, Levine's having a nice season, but so far, that's really all he's had. Beyond that, he's been a decent but nothing special point guard or shooting guard. Should the New York Knicks build around Julius Randle or sell high? Um, I would sell high. I have mentioned that many times. Yeah, I, I like Julius Randle. I think he's a great player. I think he's transitioned into a, a star player. I don't know if he'll ever be a superstar player in New York, especially when the fans come back. I think the Knicks could move and sell high for him and get a possible lottery pick in the future. So I think they move on from Julius Randle. I don't know about a lottery pick necessarily. but Why I think not? In the future. Yeah, because I think Julius Randle, with the season he's having, I think maybe the time to trade him is at the trade deadline this year. I think that's maybe his highest value. So I don't know if he'll necessarily get a lottery pick unless that is a surprise team that has an extra draft pick for whatever reason that you're going to get. Maybe in the a team. future five years from now, four yeah, years now. Well, yeah, maybe, but right. But I'm saying it's it's very tough to tell if that'll be a lottery pick. Well, you have Obi Toppin. So uh, Rudy Gobert had a very honest conversation with Donovan Mitchell to clear out the air. Well, everybody knows that Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert do not like each other. But obviously, in the offseason, with everything that happened, I think they transition to be fans of each other, not foes. So far, so good. Very first place in the West. Uh, Brooklyn's defense is bad, but may be good enough. Are, are you on <laughs> drugs? Who's writing a story like that? There's no way they win a championship giving a team 120 or more points. There's no way. There's no way they win that you could trust them to do well defensively when they just allowed 149 points to the Wizards who had previously won only three games before that. MLB rumors and news. Mets, Michael Conforto isn't buying into own team's height just yet. Well, obviously not. He's got his contract. He's got his smile on his face. Why does he give a crap? He's going to win no matter what as long as Steve Cohen is there and this team has the players uh, like Francisco Lindor and maybe the Panda Bear, the Polar Bear. So uh, they're looking good. Moving forward, the Jays interested in veterans, Yadier Molina. What do you think? I like it for the reason of the Blue Jays do not have a lot of pitching right now. They have a top prospect in Pearson who might come up this year, but beyond that, they don't have much pitching outside of Ryu. And Yadier Molina has done a great job with a lot of different pitchers throughout his career. As a, and as we've seen with the Cardinals many times, pitchers that not do well in other places. And uh, NHL news, Twitter users get on Tony D'Angelo. Alleged burner accounts. Oh, my God. Another New York guy, a.k.a. Uh, Kevin Durant, that has burner accounts. Why am I not surprised? Uh, Tony D'Angelo needs to be out of here. I mean, as a as a Ranger fan, you you are not happy what he did with the Islanders in the second game of the season. And, and, and some of the things that he's done on the ice, he lost his job. And, and now he, he's, he, he passed waivers. And now he's going to go and play in Hartford. I mean... His time with the uh, with the Rangers are done. Yeah, and then there's also the off ice issues. These comments that we've heard from other past Rangers and other guys he played with in the juniors and stuff like that. So that doesn't look well for him, good for him either. So I don't think he's going to get another NHL spot anytime soon. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen, for entertainment and sports and news. Well, well, well. How wonderful! I, I will say this: anybody that thinks the Nets are going to win a championship giving a team uh, right now teams are averaging over 119 points or more against the the Brooklyn Nets. If they think they have any chance of winning a championship moving forward this year, they better figure things out because they're not winning like that. There's no way. What do you think, Speedy? You think no. <laughs> Can you trust it when they just allowed 149 points to a three-win team? <laughs> I, I mean, you, you can't expect them to win with, w right now. And, yes, they're scoring a lot of points. They're, they've been fantastic. Kevin Durant is the second-leading scorer right now in the NBA. It, it, he's been fantastic ever since coming back from this Achilles uh, tear. And and I don't think Klay Thompson is going to be able to do what Kevin Durant has done. I mean, Kevin Durant is on a whole nother level than Klay Thompson is. But uh, Kyrie Irving has looked better since he's come back. And even James Harden has looked good. But they don't play defense. And if you don't play defense, you don't win.
We all know that. Right. You, Defense wins championships. The NBA, the NBA and even college basketball, too. It's usually a, a, a top offense type team, but you still need some level of defense. I mean, a lot of times you don't see like, all right, this team has the number two defense and the number 21 or whatever offense win titles. That's fine. But you still see some level of defense, uh, at least above average or even just average. Maybe we should take a whip ball. and strap them or something like that. <laughs> I mean, ride uh, ride Kyrie Irving like a dog. I, I don't know. I the, the whole thing with Kyrie Irving is just so sensationally funny. I mean, and I, I say sensationally because I love it. Every time I hear Kyrie Irving's name in the tabloids, I, I like to laugh. It, it's so funny. It, it's it's it, it's a joke. It really is. When you think of Kyrie Irving, uh, you think of, I don't know, Uncle Drew. You think of a guy that's a ball hog. You think of the earth is flat, okay? <laughs> that's what you think of Kyrie Irving. When you hear his name in the tabloids about – um, giving and, and obviously buying homes for people and helping people out. You look at Kyrie Irving as a nice guy, but all in all, Kyrie Irving is out of his mind. He's, he's an absolute joke. And anybody who thinks that this this team isn't going to plummet or pl- you know in in the playoffs uh, if if they're not scoring or one guy's hogging the ball more than the other, you're sadly mistaken. I think you've seen James Harden in the playoffs. We've seen James Harden completely uh, play not to his game. And we've seen this over and over again. And Kyrie Irving, there are games without LeBron James. He hasn't looked good. We've right. seen him without LeBron James with the Celtics. He hasn't played well. So, uh, and, and and Kevin Durant's Kevin Durant. We expect Kevin Durant to be the, the player that we expect him to be. But if the team isn't playing team basketball, you're not going to win even with a great player like Kevin Durant. The way the roster structure, too. It looks very much like what James Harden had in Houston. Granted, you want one more superstar. Okay, maybe that could elevate it, but... It's still, hey, maybe they should make a trade for Bradley Beal. I mean, seriously, they're getting everybody else. Maybe they could trade away their next 20 years of first round. Draft. <laughs> yeah, maybe they can uh, be fined by the whole league of the, uh, the rest of the year and only have enough salary to make it through this year at that point. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I, you might as well make a move. You might as well trade away your next 10 years worth of draft picks after their next eight. I mean, seriously, there, there's no way that the Nets are going to be able to make a move for a guy uh, like a uh, like a Bradley Peel. I mean, there's stories coming out that the Nets are going to make a move for uh, Kevin Love or, or Andre something Drummond, like that. We've heard or Andre too. Drummond if he, if, he, if he becomes available, if they, they buy out his contract. There is no way the Detroit Pistons, it, I mean, I'm sorry, not Detroit, the Cavaliers would buy out Andre Drummond's contract so he can go to the Brooklyn Nets. I can't see it. It doesn't make sense. And why would Andre Drummond want to do that anyways? Yes, he wants to win a championship, but he, going to a team that you're never going to touch the ball. I mean, <laughs> what is the difference really between him and DeAndre Jordan? I mean, he's better at this point in his career, but they're sure. basically the same. Yeah, right. And they're basically the same skill set. Mm. Neither of them could shoot for anything. They're both great rebounders. They're both great shot blocking type defenders and they do nothing else. <laughs> But before we uh, get our first guest, and by the way, at 630, we'll be talking to the host of Broadway Hats podcast, Kyle Hall, another uh, Belly Up Sports uh, podcast. Uh, I'm looking forward to get Kyle on the show. And at 715, 710, we'll be talking to the co-host of Cannons uh, and Tomahawks podcast, Alex Nuttle. Mm-hmm. Is it Nuttle? Yep. Right? Nuttle. So uh, we'll have Alex on the show as well. I'm sure we'll get into a lot of hockey conversation with these two guys. Uh, one's a Ranger fan and the other one is a Columbus Blue Jackets Ooh, fan. Oh, interesting. That, that'll be interesting. Uh, Fresh off the trade. Big trade. <laughs> yeah, big trade. Uh, Patrick Laline going over there. A Liney, I'm sorry. Patrick Liney going over there. I like Patrick, and, but I don't think Patrick will be there by the end of uh, season's end. I, I do believe that he'll he'll be treated one, traded one way or another and so is uh, Dubois. He'll be traded as well. Oh, he's already gone. He went to Winnipeg. <laughs> oh, did he go to No, no. Oh, I, he'll be trade. traded. No, he will be traded from Winnipeg. Oh, he'll be traded from Winnipeg. Yes. Yeah, both okay. guys are not going to stay yeah, with both that. respectable teams. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't yeah. see that happening. Um, but first things first, I want to get into the Super Bowl. And a lot of people, and I'm, I'm, I'm watching all these uh, predictions, fantasy predictions that Tom Brady is going to have a breakout game. He's going to throw over uh, close to 400 yards and throw three or four touchdowns. He's going to have a sensational game and and really put himself on uh, as the king of all professional sports, the the best athlete in uh, you know NFL history and in professional sports history. And you know what's funny? It, it's not the fact that. Uh, Tom Brady isn't sensational as a player and we and you can't really talk down to what Tom Brady has done in his career being that he's been to 10 Super Bowls and he's won six Super Bowls out of 10. It's it's a sensational record and and, and looking at that it really stands out for to be 
we're all utter world like it really is. It's it's crazy when you think of a guy that's going going to play in his tenth Super Bowl and has won six. I mean, teams haven't even. Uh, there are three or four teams in NFL history that haven't been to ten Super Bowls. I think there's like twenty something teams too that he has more playoff wins than their franchise history. So I mean, it's crazy. It really is. But for anybody to think that Tom Brady uh, has been the reason why Tampa has made it to the Super Bowl. Well, then I think all of you guys are just flat out blind. Uh, that's what I think. Because Tom Brady, besides the Redskin game, uh, I'm sorry, the Washington football team, um, he has not played well. Now, last week, I mean, to a week and a half ago, he, he he played a great first half and then completely choked in the second half of the game. And if it wasn't for Aaron Rodgers, uh, Green Bay would be going to the Super Bowl and not Tampa. But... Uh, three interceptions for three touchdowns and 280 yards is not a game that stands out for Tom Brady and other other world like. Okay, it really doesn't. Now Tom Brady going to this game, he's playing the young gun. He's playing the the talented Patrick Mahomes, where everybody everybody's trying to compare and contrast the next Tom Brady, the guy that's going to stand out, the guy that's going to win three or four, possibly five or six Super Bowls. And the closest one right now to that list is Patrick Mahomes, being that he's in the AFC, being that the AFC is very weak, it's not the NFC, and being that he's in a division that's with the Oakland Raiders. So that's a laughing stock by itself. <laughs> but again. You're going to a Super Bowl against a guy like Andy Reid. This is not, and I'm going to repeat this, this is not Matt LaFleur, okay? This is not. Andy Reid has won a Super Bowl. Andy Reid has been to multiple Super Bowls as a coach, as an assistant coach. Everywhere he's gone, he's won, okay? Matt LaFleur, he's never won anywhere because he's been a rookie coach for two years. He has the greatest quarterback of our era. And I'll say that again, the greatest quarterback of our era in the great Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers just, for some reason, in a big game, chokes. He And we've seen this for great quarterbacks over the years. Pa pa Peyton Manning being one of them. And I love Peyton. Peyton Manning has been a choke artist in the playoffs over the years. Even more than Aaron Rodgers, I would Aaron say. Aaron Rodgers has been another one. We've seen quarterbacks come in and been successful throughout the se regular season and choked in the playoffs. Phillip Rivers being another one. Mm -hmm. And then you got guys like Eli Manning that show up in the playoffs when uh, he doesn't have a sensational season or he, his his numbers in the, uh, the regular season don't really stick out to you like he does in the playoffs. Tom Brady is a, a guy that's been successful in the regular season and he's been successful in the playoffs. And by the way, shout out to uh, John over there. Rogers is a great quarterback, just not a winner. And I, and I absolutely agree with you, John. But all in all, when you, you look at the Super Bowl this year, you look at the young gun versus the, the old gun. And Tom Brady is on his way out. I, I don't know how many years Tom Brady has left. And He's a lot of wanting to play after 45 again. <laughs> a lot of people think that if Tom Brady wins the Super Bowl this year, he might ride off into the sunset, which quite possibly could happen. I could see that happening. I could see the same thing with Bruce Arians, too. You know, I could see that happening. Absolutely. But what happens if Tom Brady does lose? When you think of Patrick Mahomes and the greatness of Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes has been in the league for four years, three years as a starter. Okay, Alex Smith started his first year as a rookie. He came in the last game of the season, played very, very well, and then he went on to win the MVP his first year. Yep. Then the second year he won the Super Bowl, and now he's be he's going to his second Super Bowl in his third starting year. Now, even when you look at Tom Brady, it is Tom Brady-esque. Tom Brady came into the league. He backed up Drew Bledsoe, came in uh, in the middle of a season uh, when Drew Bledsoe got hurt against the – New York Jets, Mo Lewis, and then all of a sudden went all the way to the Super Bowl, won back-to-back -back Super Bowls. Then, uh, you know, his career just flourished from there. Flourished. Same thing with Patrick Mahomes. Alex Smith was traded after his first, his first year as a rookie. And then he took over, and he has been an MVP and two Super Bowl winners. It, to me, it, the closest thing to a Tom Brady story is Patrick Mahomes. And Patrick Mahomes, yeah, I, I, I don't like his cockiness. I really don't. I, I think he's a great quarterback. He's a cocky guy. And you see quarterbacks over the years as superstar quarterbacks, superstar players, they stand out, they're cocky. But I don't I just don't like his 
his his thoughts on, on how he says that he has the strongest arm in football, that he'll he'll outthrow anybody in football. Okay, why don't you win back to back Super Bowls? Then you talk about outthrowing Aaron Rodgers, outthrowing Josh Allen. Who cares how far yeah, you can I throw think, a football? I think it's just more of a competition of like arm strength and of just try stuff. Who cares? Right. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it really matters. I don't think that's really cocky on the field. <laughs> but all in all. I think that Patrick Mahomes has a very good chance to really solidify himself as the next big thing, the next big superstar. Again, if Patrick Mahomes goes into this game and puts up a dud, you're gonna you're gonna go back next season and say, "Is Patrick Mahomes for real? Is it is it is it predicated on Andy Reid's offense? Is it because of the talent around him, uh, or maybe because he lost his starting offensive tackle? That's going to be the excuse. There is no excuses. You go to the Super Bowl, you're going to win." You're not going to lose. Tom Brady, I don't want to hear those Tom Brady lovers if Tom Brady loses or he doesn't play well or he wins the game, but it's not because of Tom Brady. I don't want to hear that Tom Brady won the Super Bowl because of that. I want to I want to hear that Tom Brady was a part of winning a Super Bowl. He was a piece of winning a Super Bowl. Because all in all, the ultimate team sport in professional sports is football. It's not one player that wins a Super Bowl. It's a team that wins a Super Bowl championship. The other thing, too, is they're getting their right tackle back. So in Mitchell Schwartz, who missed the last, I think, two games of the regular season and both playoff games because he had COVID. So you're getting one, you lose one tackle and you're getting another tackle back. So Mahomes definitely has no excuse because he's already used to been being playing like that, too. And honestly, in terms of judging Schwartz as a right tackle and Fitcher as a left tackle, I think Schwartz is a better player anyway. I, I, I don't care. I, I don't want to hear any excuses from any of those teams, the Kansas City fans and the Tampa Bay Buccaneer fans. Now, uh, I, I talked to Mark and, and, and Mark Kelly, who I, I'm a big fan of, and he's a good friend of the show. He's a big, uh, a big writer for us uh, for our network. Mark Kelly thinks that Tom Brady is the greatest athlete to ever play professional sports. I think he's on drugs. Wow. I think he's on drugs. Okay, Michael Jordan never lost in the finals. Okay, Michael Jordan never lost in the finals, and the only reason why he didn't go to eight championships in a row is because he retired and he came back because of the death of his father. Wayne Gretzky too won four cups at Edmonton and then took a Kings team that had nothing really besides that to the to the Stanley Cup against Montreal. How about Mike Bossy with the New York Islanders, the four championships in a row? We'll never see that again. So again, uh, you can you can argue your point that Tom Brady is the greatest athlete of all time or Tom Brady is the greatest football player of all time. Tom Brady isn't even on my top five football players of all time. Okay. Well, yeah, of course, if you're judging all indivi- time, right. if you're judging individual football players, it's yes. probably Jerry, Jerry Rice, Rice, Reggie White, yes. Morris Taylor, Barry Deion Sanders, Sanders, guys like that. Yeah, guys that played on. Right. Sh- I almost said a curse. Crappy teams, crappy teams. <laughs> Barry's and I, I'm not going to say Jerry Rice played up on a right. crappy team, but let's be honest. Deion Sanders over the years. Did he play besides the Cowboys? Was he on great teams on the you know uh, for his whole career? He yeah, wasn't. Good, yeah. Atlanta good was good, but not good, great. Good, but yeah, not but great. great. Mm-hmm. I mean, the 49ers were good. The the Cowboys were good. That's why he won titles with those teams. Uh, how about Barry Sanders? Did he play on great teams? <laughs> nope. I mean, Jim Jim Brown, did he play on great teams? Uh, he did to an extent. He but... was the player that made those teams great. Right. That's what I was going to say. He was the best player on that offense. Even though it was a good offense, he was the best, still the best player by far. And he was unheard of in an era of football that had a lot of smaller players. He was uh, just a plow. <laughs> to me... Tom Brady is one of the greatest top 10 great quarterbacks. and I mean, uh, no, he's top five quarterback of all time. If he wins the Super Bowl, even if it's not the reason why to win the Super Bowl, if he wins seven out of 10 Super Bowls, I put him as my top two. I would say he's the second greatest quarterback to ever play the game, right behind Joe Montana. Because I still think Joe Montana never lost in the playoffs, never lost, I'm sorry, never lost in the Super Bowl. Right. Okay, so I'm going to take the guy that's never lost in the Super Bowl. And he also shredded a Broncos defense that was considered orange crushed, one of the best defenses in the league. The Bengals SWAT team secondary, which was one of the better secondaries in that time. A Dolphins team that, again, wasn't as good as the 49ers, but was still a decent team with Dan Marino. Shredded that team. And had a great comeback against the Bengals the first time too. So you're, every Super Bowl he played well in. Tom Brady it's probably half and half in terms of those Super Bowls, like judging just his raw numbers and just his visual game. You can't attack Tom Brady for what success he's done in the NFL. I can't attack him, even though I can't stand the man. Okay, I can't stand him. Can't see the smile. Can't stand the look. Can't stand his wife. Can't stand anything. Okay, <laughs> and and but besides the fact that when when they had that Facebook show, the Tom Brady Facebook documentary, he kissed his son, and everybody was having a heart attack. Uh, Tom Brady has been uh, the the face of the NFL. 
He, he's really been the face of the NFL, just like Derek Jeter was the face of baseball for many, many years. But Tom Brady has played on great teams. Tom Brady has played for one of the greatest coaches of all time in Bill Belichick. Tom Brady is playing for one of the greatest offensive minds right now in NFL history in Bruce Arians. So to say that Tom Brady is the only reason why this team is in the Super Bowl because of his leadership, not because of his game playing, because if, if you're going to tell me Tom Brady throwing three interceptions in the a NFC title game is, is something that stands out to you on the reason why they went to the Super Bowl, well, God damn it, you don't know what you're talking about. So... I, that's all I'm going to say about that. But it's going to be a fun game to watch. You, you have the old, uh, the old quarterback versus the new age quarterback. Two quarterbacks that have had success in the NFL in such a short time in their careers, and and now uh, you're seeing the end of a, a quarterback's career to uh, the new age of the mobile slash stylicious. And I say stylicious because that's what I call. Patrick Mahomes. That's what I call the new style quarterback, stylicious. Um, a guy that loves to flaunt his hair, flaunt himself on uh, commercials and state farms or whatever the heck he wants uh, that he puts him on with a pig, a duck, or whatever the heck. Uh, whatever he's on, uh, Patrick Mahomes is the center of attention right now for the NFL. When we come back, ladies and gentlemen, we will be talking to the host of Broadway Hats podcast, Kyle Hall, here on Below the Mic. It's the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Do current market conditions have you nervous? Our experienced team of financial professionals at Heritage Harbor Financial Associates understands that no two investors are alike. We all have different goals, needs, and appetites for risk. That's why the one-size-fits-all approach does not work, especially when planning for retirement. At Heritage Harbor Financial Associates, we analyze your unique investment style so that you can work toward your individual retirement goals on your terms. Heritage Harbor Financial Associates can help you take steps to reach your retirement goals by providing a wide array of financial financial products to fit your needs, even for the risk adverse. Give us a call at 631-331-6599 to learn more or to set up an appointment with one of our financial professionals. You can also find us on the web at hhfa.org or on Facebook at facebook.com slash hhfa.org. Our number again is 631-331-6599. That's 631-331-6599. Investments in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds and variable annuities are not FDIC insured and are subject to fluctuation in value market risk, including loss of principal heritage, Harbor Financial Associates offers securities through AXA Advisors, LLC, New York, New York, member FINRA, SIPC, annuity and insurance products offered through AXA Network, LLC. It's the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. As you guys know, this is Below the Mic. Remember, you can call us at 631 500-0548 is the number to call. You can also go to our website at www.worldwidesportsradio.com. You can download our app by going to iOS, WWSRN, or Android, Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Well, I had to get out my whole Tom Brady spiel because uh, everybody and their mother is talking about Tom Brady. The great Tom Brady. Everybody bow down to Tom Brady. Give him a kneel before he steps on the field and kiss his ass. Well, I'm not going to do that yet, okay? So until it happens, until he wins the Super Bowl uh, this coming weekend, I am not going to sit down and kneel down and kiss his ass. So that's all I'm going to say about that. As you guys know, we are now talking to the host of Broadway Hat Podcast, Kyle Hall. What's going on, Kyle? Hey, how you guys doing? I'm good, man. I mean, we 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 took shots at Tom Brady. Oh, well, I took shots at Tom Brady. You won't hear that from Speedy because he, you know, he's going to be one of those guys that the kneel on his knees and kiss him in the ass. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> yes, he will. My I, my my Giants made him uh, made him worry a little bit though. That's all, that's all that matters. So, how are you and your family doing with this pandemic, Kyle? Uh, yeah, we're hanging in there. Uh, I work for a hotel company in New York City, so it's been a little rough uh, from a job aspect wise but uh you know all in all we're good i have a little one-year-old so congratulations being able to stay home with him is, is great you know uh you know what happens if we trade your son for speedy Petey? we'll wrap him up we'll put him in like a nice little uh uh what do you call it a cradle or something like that and you know you can put him to sleep because he doesn't sleep this man does not sleep he's up all hours of the night he's like a little child so if you want to smack him I around do sleep you want I to just him or something like that it's just shifted from the normal smack person him around because look at him i mean look at him I mean, look at the beard. Look at the mustache. I mean, he, he looks like a little dirty scoundrel right 
I mean, seriously. <laughs> Anyways, uh, as you guys know, we are talking to the host of Broadway Hat Podcast, Kyle Hall. So tell us a little bit about your show and what – how did you find Belly Up Sports? Now, Belly Up Sports is a partner of what we're doing right now with the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. What made you uh, start a radio show, a podcast, and what drove you to Belly Up Sports? Yeah, I, it kind of just all came together pretty much in the same month. I During the pandemic, I started working from home uh, and you know, had a little extra time on my hands. And I was like, something I've always wanted to do. Uh, I always wanted to kind of do a podcast. And I, I never had... I guess really the uh, the direction on how to start it. So I, I talked to a friend of mine who started it, who started his own podcast, and he kind of got me going in the right direction. And then, you know, I just kind of happened to be online looking up, actually just looking at New York Ranger podcasts, actually, and blogs. And for whatever reason, because Google reads your mind, <laughs> the next day on Google, I had a, like an ad on top. Uh, belly up sports uh, writers, you know, looking for writers. Mm -hmm. So I, I wrote to them. I, I let them know my intention of what I was looking for. That I was starting a podcast, and it, you know, that was around Thanksgiving, and and now it's uh, pretty much taken off since then. So, have you been a Ranger fan your whole life? And if so, what are some of your favorite memories, both of what you've seen, just watching games, and also maybe attending games at Madison Square Garden, or even some events with the Rangers? Yeah, I uh, my entire life been a Ranger fan. My dad. Uh, started taking me to games when I was like, you know, three, four years old. Sorry I was actually... I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I've oh. seen a cup. Uh, so, well, you know, I've seen a cup too, quite a few times in person. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, yeah, but God, I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, so uh, I was raised a Ranger fan. Uh, you know, I was going to games a lot when I was little. Um, you know, some. I tried to go to, I think that I mean, the last couple of playoff runs, I tried to go to a game each playoff series. Um, so a lot of great memories going to uh, some playoff games there while they're, especially during the, the last Stanley Cup run. Um, you know, just that's really the last time the Rangers were, were in it. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I, my brothers are big Ranger fans. So, you know, I love going to games with them. And it's just, uh, it's always a cool, you, there's nothing like MSG when you walk in on game day. And I know it's something like now, and even when you walk into, you go into Penn Station now, and it's just like, it's like another world now because everyone's obviously home and it doesn't have that same feel to it. But like the one thing I'm looking forward to is just going back to a Ranger game and walking into MSG and having that like whatever smell that they have like through the concourse that like hits you between like, you know, the, the old popcorn and the beer and the hot dog smell. Like, I think that's just something that like you can't replicate in the world. So uh, that's just something that, you kind of like, all right, when the world comes back, like I guess you can't wait to get back there for a live game. You know what I like uh, when I walk into Madison Square Garden? Uh, the smell of losing. That's what I like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go to Ranger games. Uh, one of the main reasons, I grew up a Ranger fan. Uh, until the age of 11, uh, the Rangers traded my one of my favorite players, John Van Beesbrook. And I decided uh, on the, you know, behind the reasons of keeping Mike Richter over John Van Beesburg, maybe because of the age, I, I was really upset with the Rangers. I then decided to follow him to the Florida Panthers and eventually became an Islander fan. I've been an Islander fan ever since. And I've, I've watched a lot of losing years. And now finally with Barry Trotz and, and the, uh, the growth of some of these young players, even losing John Tavares to free agency because the guy's a moron. Um, I, you know, I, I've learned a lot, even as a hockey player, because I was a big time hockey player growing up as well. I was a, a top recruited hockey player. But uh, let me ask you this question. Y you look at the Rangers now and you can you compare and contrast the 90s Rangers because you're you're still quite a, you're still a young guy. You're, you're not an older guy. How old are you? Thirty one. You're 30. You're a young guy. So you really never really had the opportunity to see the Rangers win the Stanley Cup in 94. You were a baby. OK, I actually saw the Rangers win the Stanley Cup. I was 13 years old when the Rangers won the Stanley Cup. I wasn't a happy camper when I saw it because it was the year uh, in the year after the year after Van Beesburg. Yeah, yes, it was the year after I became a Ranger hater. So I wasn't very an exciting person. I wanted to see the the the. The Devils knock them out in the the Eastern Conference Championship, but that didn't happen. Matteau, 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 if you remember. But what is your thoughts to this team now? The growth of some of the young players. What stands out right now, being that there's about ten games into the season? Well, I think you really can't compare it to the '90s Rangers. Um, you can compare and the Rangers of those years had some homegrown players in Richter and Leach, 
But a lot of those guys in the 94 team, you know, Neil Smith, you know, loved to trade. Like every, you know, if he didn't make a trade that week, you know, something was weird. So that 94 team was constructed with a lot of spare parts and a, a lot of different guys. Um, and really, after the 94 team, the Rangers has continued to do that, sign overpriced free agents, and they never really had a farm system that they can rely on. So I think the biggest change, you know, after the 2005 lockout, um, that's when they kind of the, the whole organization kind of took a, a step back. They started getting rid of. Uh, they were able to buy out a lot of these contracts because of the lockout, and um, that's when it started to turn around for them with the homegrown talent. And you kind of look back to that 2015 Cup run team, and, and you see a lot of homegrown players like McDonough step on. Um, you know, Lundqvist obviously was there forever, uh, but I I would compare them more to the early 2010s or late 2000. You know. 2008 is really when it started to turn around from the prospect standpoint when you look back at those teams. But I mean, if you're a Ranger fan, you can't not be happy about the quote unquote rebuild that's going on. I mean, the way that the rookies or second year players have played, I think is, is really encouraging. But I also think Ranger fans had really high expectations coming into this year um, just because of the year we had last year. And I mean, you got to remember, we, you kind of snuck into the playoff bubble. We weren't an actual we weren't in an eight seed we snuck into the playoff bubble it kind of got our, our butt handed to us there by carolina in three games but you know there was an experience level <laughs> there's an experience level that they they gained from that which i think was valuable but uh you know it is still we're still in a rebuild so when some ranger fans kind of freak out now and and ranger fans on twitter are very tough you know when the rangers lose uh, i mean yeah you can get upset i get frustrated too sometimes but uh, you got to remember that there's a lot of young kids in that team. It's going to be a lot, a lot more growing to do for this this group. So one of those young players that Errol and I both surprised is, is up this year is Keandre Miller, mm -hmm. who we thought might have been two years away. Mm -hmm. And he's been up this year. And outside of the, the Islander game, the first one of the season where ever, nobody played well in that game, he's really played well in every other game so far. So what have you seen from him, like skill-wise the most, numbers-wise the most from him? And he's, he's, he exceeded your expectations. Yeah, I wrote a preseason blog just hoping he made the team. Um, you just from watching him with the U.S. junior team, uh, you, already, you knew he was going to be a good player, but I think he exceeded everyone's expectations, the coaching staffs, the fans, probably his own um, from his play. Like you said, the first game of the year, he kind of looked lost, and the the coaches even said afterwards, you know, game got a little too fast for him. He just didn't look comfortable. And then the second game he started, he looked a little better. But the last really the last five games since they got to Pittsburgh, the first game against Pittsburgh, uh, he played well. He played really well against Crosby. And I think that first game against Pittsburgh, he kind of gave him the confidence um, that, Hey, I, I can play in this league. Um, you know, since that he's first, I think, yeah, since that game, uh, the last five games, he's averaging over 20 minutes in ice time. So, I mean, for a rookie defenseman, that's pretty substantial time. Uh, he's on the ice. Last minute of games, he's playing overtime shifts when they blow leads in the third period when they got to go to overtime. Uh, he's he's getting the OT shifts. You know, he leads the team right now in plus and minus at plus seven. I think the next guy's like plus three, so it's not even close to where he's at. So um, he just looks so much more comfortable back there. His defensive game is better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I know his offensive game, he's got four points already, which is great, but. You know, for a, a guy that size, you want to make sure he can play in the defensive zone and, and be physical. And, and he's definitely showed that he's not afraid to go in front of the net and move someone out. So, yeah, I mean, he's had, unfortunately, some some things said about him in the media this week because of the uh, Tony D'Angelo scenario. That doesn't seem to be true. Just a lot of rumors around him. Um, but, you know, it's I think he's had a great open to the season. And hopefully, I mean, every game he gets better. So, you know, there's there's some talk about him now creeping up with the Calder Trophy uh, voting now. So I think you guys are on drugs. If you think he's going <laughs> to win the Calder Trophy. <laughs> he's having a good season. There, there's no question. I, I've been surprised with him, but for a Calder Trophy, he's not even – I'm not, not saying it. Go on Twitter. Go on Twitter. Uh, uh, listen. Uh, the I've never Calder seen a Ranger with more – Ranger, fan accounts in the first, fans, season, Ranger first fans season. are on drugs, okay? That's Ranger fans speaking. It's not anybody else speaking but Ranger fans. As a, as a as an analyst and as somebody that watches hockey just as much as I watch any sport, I think uh, uh, Miller has played uh, 
very well, very good for the first 10 games of the season. It's still very, very early in the season. How many goals does he have? He doesn't, he was got one goal. Only one. Now one goal. Yeah. He's got one goal. You, you're going to talk about him being a Calder Trophy winner? I mean, come He's on. Defenseman. He's not a... Well, but defensemen have to score goals. They got to, they got to do other things too besides play defense. I mean, I could say the same thing about Noah Dobson. Noah Dobson has three goals so far this season. He's a Calder Trophy uh, candidate. Come on. I mean, seriously, you can't put somebody as a cold a trophy candidate. Just I'm not saying he's gonna be up there. I'm saying that's the right. buzz you get from Ranger fans on Twitter. They're excited uh, about this guy. Uh, Ranger fans are excited about everything. They're probably uh, excited about the dirty underwear that landed on the ice when uh, somebody scored a hat trick because it gives them good luck. I, I have no idea. Some of the Ranger fans that I've seen over the years, uh, and I'm not saying you, but Ranger fans are out of their damn minds. I, I, they're just crazy. As you guys know, we are talking to the host of Broadway Hats podcast, Kyle Hall. And by the way, Kyle, I am not a Ranger hater like everybody. I don't like the Rangers. Oh, really? <laughs> but I don't hate them, okay? Everybody thinks that I hate them. But I'll be honest with you. I, I think Miller has been – he's he definitely is standing out right now. But, I, again, I'm going to say this, and I'll say it over and over again. I think they should have traded Lafreniere. Uh, they, it, it, getting that number one pick, I would have I traded that number one pick and got myself a top-end number one pick style defense name because that's where they're lacking at the position and and maybe get themselves a sixth or a seventh pick uh in the draft and they still would have gotten a quality player and, and we don't know what alexis lafanier is and so far he's what one goal i think he's got a goal yep. overtime yeah. winner last week that's I, I i mean he hasn't really done anything so i, I know he's young and i only i know he's only 18 years old but again uh uh, to me, it's alarming when you have so much offense and those offensive players, when it comes down to the playoffs, they don't show up. Yeah, I think the thing with Lafreniere is he got off to a really slow start and, and he even said himself after the first goal that he was pressing. Mm -hmm. And I think as a first overall pick that happened, obviously that happens. I think you have to come in and want to produce right away for your team. And. I did not like his game last game. I thought, you know, he only played nine minutes. I think it was like the least, second least on the team, uh, even with Brendan Smith getting hurt. So you kind of see him falling out of order a little bit with the coaching staff. His numbers, his ice time has been going moron. down the last three games. He's a moron, first of all. Well, yeah, he's he's. You cannot you cannot put your number one tra top draft pick all the way and push him all the way down to nine minutes when this kid needs to create some confidence. And now all of a sudden, because he's not playing well or he's pressing, you're going to put him in for nine minutes. Have you ever seen Barry Trotz do that? Never. No, it, it's something that. Quinn's done the last couple of years too. And unfortunately, Vigneault did it as well when he was the coach. For whatever reason, Ranger coaches decide that they're going to take these prospects. And I've talked to a lot of Ranger prospects about this too, you know, young guys about it, that they say the same thing about certain guys. Like, why didn't this guy make it? Why, you know, well, when they come up, like Elias Anderson, I, I'll talk to a guy about Elias Anderson. He's like, you know, when he was in Hartford, he was the best player on the ice, you know, best playing the first line in practice. He was the best guy in practice. He go up to the Rangers, he's playing fourth line. So who is he passing the puck to? No one. You know who is he creating with? No one. Damn so man. how are you gonna get a good sense of this player if he's not playing with the top echelon talent? If he's not on a first or second line. But with Lafreniere, they kind of gave him a chance to play with Zibanejad and Kreider on the first line, and he didn't really produce at all with them. I was excited when that happened. I thought that would get maybe that line going because the two of them were struggling as well. Kreider's come on lately, but Zibanejad's been awful this year. Mm -hmm. You know he is not been the same player as he's well, been yeah, in the last he COVID-19, first of all. And he, yeah, but he's, he's saying that's not the excuse, though. Uh, but obviously ab the absolutely. First of all, he lost about 13 pounds. Yeah, okay. and he just looks – he just looks – Dra he's dragging during the games. You can see it. It has to be the COVID. And, I, and, and this is coming from an Islander fan. That's not a Ranger fan. I, I will tell you, Zabitajad lost 13, 14 pounds ever since he got COVID-19. He missed OTAs. He missed practices. Well, I call it OTAs, but uh, preseason practices and pre and, 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 and I guess uh, pickup games or whatever they got ready for the play. I mean, the regular season. Uh, so uh, you could see the difference that he's pressing. But Zabitajad, out of all the guys that really stands out to me, even Panarin, Zabitajad Jab will figure things out. He did, this is a guy that's high flying. He could do everything on the ice. He can hit you. He he, he sticks up for his his players. To me, he's the best player on the Rangers. There, there's not even a question. I, I know a lot of people love Panarin for what he did last year, and he's a sensational goal scorer. But all around games, I'm taking a bit of Jet over Panarin. No, I think you're 100 correct. I think when and I actually wrote this in the preseason, my preseason uh, post about it too. The Rangers go as the Banjet goes. When he came, when he was red hot last year, the Rangers were red hot, you know. It and now with Filipino out for the next month, 
you know, they're really lacking center depth. And, and Zabanjad really has to step up because Ryan Strom has been up and down this year, too. Uh, your, your former Islander boy. I, I don't, um, never liked Ryan Strom. So you know, I, I was happy they didn't give him a long term deal. You know, they gave him a kind of a bridge deal, but uh, he has, he's been playing better the last couple of games, but he had a really slow start to the season. But if Zabanjad doesn't figure it out quickly, the Rangers could be in trouble here. So speaking of center depth, you were actually mentioning to me a couple uh, when I was setting up for the interview that the Rangers and Derek Stepan possibly is a reuniting a rumor that's happening. So tell the fans about that and what it would take in order for them to do that. Yeah, so it's actually something I floated on my last episode of my podcast. So we're kind of going over some options for who the Rangers can pick up as a center. Um, and it seems like Tony D'Angelo's agent has come out and said that there are multiple teams now floating around the Rangers wanting to get D'Angelo dealt. Um, and the Rangers, take him. he stinks. Yeah, I don't care. They, someone, anyone could take him. But apparently a team, I saw a couple things earlier today that um, a team that might be interested is Ottawa because they're looking to offload salary. And for the Rangers to make this work, they'd have to probably take some salary back and, uh, Derek Stepan's making six point five million in Ottawa. Ottawa does not want to pay him six point five million. You know he is not the same player he was, but he's only thirty years old. So it's not like he's really at the end of his career. Like he has a couple of good years left. Uh, he's not obviously the same player as he was when he left the Rangers. But I mean to fill in as a third, second line center. I mean you can do worse. He's in the last year of his contract, so you kind of give him a, a show. You know it's kind of a a show me year for him anyway. Mm -hmm. And now for the Rangers could use some veteran leadership right now. Anyway, in the locker room, as you guys know, we are talking to the host of Broadway hats podcast on belly up sports, Kyle hall, Kyle, before we let you go. Okay. And I, I know a lot of people, I know a lot of people uh, have this Ranger Islander, you know, uh, what, what's the word speed rivalry, <laughs> not rivalry. I, I hatred. Okay. As, as a Ranger fan, do you hate the Islanders? And if you nah. do, uh, no, so you don't hate the Islanders. I don't hate the Islanders. I think the reason, and you're going to hate my reasoning behind it. I, I want to hear this. Go ahead. Growing up, the Islanders were never a problem for the Rangers when I was you know, when I was growing up watching the Rangers. That I mean, the Ranger, the Islanders were you know going through a rebuild, and they had you know the fish sticks days when they didn't have an owner and you know fake owners. They always and played and, well. They always played well against the Rangers. Always. Yeah, I, I was never worried. I, I'm more of a I more hated the, the devils than anything. I hated Brodeur. Um, that was more of a rivalry in my mind um, for the Tristan area. Greatest goaltender ever. Greatest goaltender ever. I hope you're relating some Marty chance. Heck like <laughs> <Marty. laughs> How could you hate Martin Brodeur? I mean, now you. you Very you, easily. Well, I mean, because you beat your team every time. That's why you hate him. Right? <laughs> but now that he's retired, you can't hate the guy. I mean, the guy's one of no, the got you gotta respect him. You have to respect that he was a great goalie, but you can still not like him. Yeah, how many Islander fans hate Lundqvist? I don't hate Henrik Lundqvist. A matter of fact, I speak very highly of Henrik Lundqvist. I think Henrik Lundqvist is one of the greatest goaltenders of this era. I, I, I don't think if if you look at Henrik Lundqvist and what he did in this era and and the goaltenders in the '90s, I don't think he comes even close with with the Dominic Kashiks, the uh, the Eddie Belfours, the even the the Mike Richters and John Van Beesbrooks and the Tom Barrasos. I mean, th those goaltenders in that goaltending time uh, was the greatest time for goaltending. I mean, now you look at you know guys like Henrik Lundqvist. Who was as good as Henrik Lundqvist in this time in this era? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, uh, it's definitely not any of the Islander goaltenders. That's for sure. I think he's judging more fan hate versus analytic hate. Though. Yeah. Ah, I, I don't think fans hate Henrik Lundqvist, even Islander fans. Because wh wh why would the Islander fans hate Henrik Lundqvist? He's not putting the puck in the net. He's stopping the puck. And, and as an Islander fan, I, I always look I always look at great goaltending. If, if you're a great goalie and you're stopping uh, our great offensive players, well, then we got to find better offensive players. I mean, seriously. So – I, goaltending is, is the hardest position in professional sports. I don't care what anybody says. Try to get a 100 mile per hour, 110 mile per hour slap shit coming at you uh, and, and, and coming in all different directions with a man standing in front of you. you tell me you can stop too, yeah. it and, and try to stop it. Okay. I mean, it's not easy. Okay. So uh, I think goaltending is the hardest position in professional sports. That's talking about pitching. That's talking about quarterback play. It is the hardest position in professional sports. And anybody that denies it, well, then you don't know sports or you've never even actually stepped on the ice. Tr imagine a guy uh, wearing 
pads and, and equipment worth it's probably all together about 20 pounds okay uh, uh, 20 20 to 16 pounds of uh, and it on the ice for three periods and the ice you know it, the wet ice going into the pad and seeping into the pad and it's even heavier to drag you're skating on the ice you're moving side to side while these guys are going 50 60 miles per hour on the ice tell me and and and, and these guys are coming at a full breakaway on you trying to move and deke around you and you have to you know, position yourself to stop the puck. I mean, it's not, it's not easy. It, it, it's definitely not. So I, I think goaltending is the hardest. So anybody that thinks Henrik Lundqvist wasn't a great goaltender, any Islander fan, well, then they don't know what the hell they're freaking talking about. Okay. So anyways, um, why don't you tell the fans how they can find you on social media, man? Yeah. So you can follow me on Twitter uh, at K hall and why, uh, and you can follow uh, the podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And then the podcast is on Instagram at the Broadway Hat Podcasts. I want to get you, I want to get you back on as the season progresses, uh, because I want to talk more Ranger hockey uh, and where the Rangers are going to be right now. They are the worst team in the division. Am I right? They're tied with the Islanders. Uh, tied with the Islanders. Yes. Yes. So the two New York teams are absolutely horrendous. If if the Buffalo Sabres are ahead of you. There's something wrong. Yeah. Okay, there is something wrong. So, so, what do you what do you think about the division setup, though? Do you I like it? it? I hate yeah, it. Yeah, I hate it. I think the Rangers and the Islanders got screwed. I, I do. It's the so toughest I, division by far. I mean, look, you got Washington, you got Philadelphia. That's one of the hottest young teams right now, and one of the hottest young goaltenders in all of professional hockey. Uh, I mean, you got the Pittsburgh Penguins when you have Sidney Crosby and Malkin still at the top of their games. I mean, that's a terrible division for the rain and the Boston Bruins. I mean, who are always good. I mean, so it's, it's terrible. If you look at every other division, there's always one layup in every division. They don't have that least. No. Nope. You know, this is no Senators or a Shark or a Red Wing. There's no team that you can go in every night and say, "Oh yeah, we're gonna beat them tonight." And Even Bo I mean, Buffalo is that team, but they're Buffalo looks good. You know, other than the goaltending's kind of you know all over the place, but. They have good players. Yeah. Their goaltending's horrendous, but the rest of the team's not bad at all. Yeah, Especially their defense. People will think of as bad. It's it's underrated. It's not really that bad. They arguably have the third or fourth best player in the league on the team. Okay, I mean, you can argue your points on how they play or what what type of players they have or what kind of goaltender they have. They have like two or three top twenty players on that team, and they have a great young defenseman that's uh, starting to develop. So, I mean, they're 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 set up really really well. They just got to find a goalie. And I, that's going to be, and, and I'll say this about the Islanders. Uh, the Islanders are putting Sorokin in the worst positions right now to be successful. I know he's young and I know he's from, he's from the KHL. He has to figure things out, but how could you put a goaltender in certain games where you're not putting the puck in the net? You're not playing defense in front of them. So how do you expect the kid to figure out things and, and get built confidence? I don't, I don't know what the Islanders are doing right now. Barry Trotz is, is going to have to figure things out. I think the thing about the Rangers goalies too is, you know, I they're already announced they're playing Igor tomorrow night, which I think needs to happen. They need to stick with one guy. And a shortened year like this, you can't really be throwing games away. Um, I think you gotta find your number one guy and just ride him for you know, not for all fifty six games, but you know, short year. Like you gotta get going here. I think and, been, and I Igor's think been better than Gorgiev by absolutely, far. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. So we'll see what happens. Uh, um I think it's going to be very, very interesting moving forward uh, for the Rangers and the Islanders. Hopefully, uh, there's some movement in trades at the trade deadline because I think both teams are – I think the Rangers need defense, and I think the Islanders need to find themselves a prolific offensive player. They don't have one. They have one player, Matthew Barzell, that's a sensational player, but you can't expect one player to figure things out and make things happen when you don't have that other player that's going to help them. So, uh, anyways, uh, Kyle, thank you for joining us. We're going to get you on again. You're awesome. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. As you guys know, we were just talking to the host of Broadway Hats podcast, Kyle. I love this kid. Mm -hmm. I love him. He's a nice kid. Um, he's a Ranger guy. I'm not a big fan of that. <laughs> yeah, but, we know. <laughs> but I, I love the kid. He, he's got a good personality. He knows what he's talking about. And uh, he, he's straightforward with you. You know, unfortunately, there's a lot of uh, fans out there that are not. Uh, Oh, look who we have on. Uh, so, uh, you know, I have to put this guy on before we uh, get our next guest on. What's going on, Beaver? How are you, my friend? I'm good, man. W what would That's you like to talk about? No, that, that was a really good interview with um, the Ranger guy. Kyle Hall, man. Kyle yeah, Hall, very, Belly Up Sports. You can check out his show. Uh, he's a Ranger guy, uh, I think. And you can interact with him. Uh, and maybe you guys could be buddies and hang out and have a couple of drinks and maybe <laughs> yeah. have some uh, hot dogs or uh, sausages well, they, or something they, like well, that. Well, it's not weird like Steve. 
well, Speedy's a little weird. You know, we can cradle him. We can stick him in a. I'll stick him in like a man. Speedy will look good as a woman. You know, like a, oh, God. You know, we're not we doing that beard. again. We shave his beard. We put a wig on his head. I already had to do that once. I'm not doing that again. I, I think that would look good. I, let's of make a bet. Of course you do. Let's make a bet. Of course you let's do. Make oh, yeah. Let's make a what bet. Let's Let's make. What are we betting on? There's uh, we'll to... bet on the Super Bowl. If Tom Brady doesn't have over 350 yards, in <laughs> I don't game. think he will. All right. So what do you think? What do you think? I think he'll have probably eh, 250. And all right, 250. So if Tom Brady 250, has two touchdowns. All right, sort of if Tom Brady has more than 250 yards, you have to wear a dress on the show. No, I think he will have more. No, than no, 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 no. You're no, getting no. the less because you won. They're <laughs> the one that hates Tom. Brady, but I, so. I, I tell you what, if I if if Tom Brady has uh, 250 or less, I'll wear I'll wear a dress in a wig. No, because I think he'll have more more than less. Oh, so wait a second. You just told me he's not going to have more than 200. Oh, you think he'll have more? Yeah, I think he will. Oh, okay. All right. So let's make a bet. I, I No, that's a hard one to do. I think it's a great bet. I think you need to wear a wig. How about uh, this? If we get bra straps and, and, and you wear, you, you know, I think that would be good. I mean, we could put I'm you. Not, with, I'm not betting less for I that. I think he would look good with breasts. I think he's of a range of 250 I and think, 280. Uh, speed, speed, I think I, you would look good with breasts. I really do. I think, I think you should take the bet. I think you should take that bet. That's, I think a, you that's a tough one to bet, Mike. Of I'm going less. <laughs> I uh... I, I, I think, I think, what do you guys think? I, I think the fans need a vote. I think we need to put up, up a survey. Uh, what would you should, rather? You should, a, you should get a poll up. Put a poll up. Uh, 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 how about this, Speedy? If you lose, you have to wear a woman's thong. I don't want to bet the, uh, the under. <laughs> if, that's what, if that's what we're judging. So what do you want to bet? I want I want a real legitimate bet right now. And I want the fans to watch what happens. Wow. And I will take any bet against your bet. Any bet. You pick any bet. I will take them. And I will take it. And I'll ride with it. And if I lose, I lose. I'll do whatever you tell me I have to do. Even if, hey, listen, you lost a bet recently. You had to kiss somebody's foot. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so. I know. And that, that was way less humiliating than what this one <laughs> <laughs> Come on. It, who wants to see Speedy wear a woman's thong on a radio show? They already saw that three years ago. Well, you, you, you tell everybody you've, you've done the show in commando. I mean, seriously. I said oh. I wore my pajamas in my house. Yeah, with no underwear on. I mean, seriously. And they didn't see it. Um, well, thank God they didn't see it because they, God knows you don't shave over there. So that, that doesn't matter. Oh, man. They wouldn't have seen it anyway because I'm not going to freaking strip on air. <laughs> Anyways, I mean, I, I think the Rangers are going to fire Dan Quinn at the end of this year. Um, I, I think so too. I think Dan Quinn is one of the worst coaches right now in the I, NHL. I think my, my biggest problem with him is is that he's shuffling the lines around way too much, and he's not sticking with one goaltender. Mm -hmm. He needs to stay with one goaltender, and that's Shostorkin. Mm. I, I don't think so. I think uh, I, I don't think Shostorkin has played well this year. I, I don't. I, I think um, – what's I his name again? Georgiev. Georgiev. He's been the better goaltender. And I don't think so. He, look what he did against the Islanders. I mean, he always, but wait, hold on. He, he's always had, he always been down. What is his goals against average oh, right wow. now? What is his goals against average right now? I want to say two six, uh, right? Two now. six to uh, Shazorki and whatever his name is. This he, is in the two eight range. Two, two eight good. range. I mean, that's not good. That's not good. You, yeah, you, you how, how, many, how many games have they, have they both played combined? Five each. Yeah. Right now, it's, it's, a, it's a split. Now, I think, I think visually, if you're judging, the types of saves they made, the amount of shots they faced. I think Shesterkin's had a harder challenge for the most part so far this year, he's, and he's, he's done well in certain years. instances. But again, the late game issues have come more in well, well, both well, of those. Under, but, that, but that's on the defense turning over the puck. No, I agree. I'm not. Like I'm not blaming it all on the goalies either. I'm not it's saying not either goalie's all, bad. It's not, all, it's not all his fault. It, it really isn't. No, nobody said that. We, Errol and I, say all the time how. Bad it's the never the goal. Is, it's yeah. never the goalie's fault. It's it's because no, of the defense. No, sometimes, no, some, sometimes it is. no, if a bad goal goes in, but honestly, if you're going to blame somebody, you blame the defense. It, defense wins championships. I've said this. Yeah, a goaltender is yeah. the backbone of the of the of, of the team. No question yeah, that he does. Goal, goal, but goal, not in a regular goal, season. Goal. That's true. Georgiev has had more soft goals if you're wanting just that. But in terms of the consistency factor, they're still Georgiev being the veteran guy is still slightly in the lead at the moment. I get my my biggest problem is him shuffling the lines the lines around too much. He can't you gotta get right, coaches do that all the time. Over. What's the big deal? But no, but Quinn does it way too much. Quinn is hurt. He's hurt the growth of some of these young players. I really do believe that. And I think he's gonna continue doing that. I think they need to bring in another coach. I don't. I, I don't I never liked Quinn. I never did. 
Now, I, uh, obviously I like coming – and I don't, now I just I don't, I don't know what he's doing. He I, comes I from a good college, you know. Uh, you yes. know, he comes from a very good college uh, program, and and he, he he supposedly helped a lot of young players. But what he's doing right now with some of the young players with the Rangers, he's it, it's affected their growth. It, it definitely it has. has. Yes. Yes. So I um, I, so I, I think he's on the way out at the end of the year. At the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And by the way, uh, Igor, uh, John saying right now on the feed that Igor has a 2.41 goals against average and also says he has a 907 percentage. Uh, he's been better. So, uh, yeah, because yeah, he's faced more shots, which makes sense. That's what I was saying yeah. earlier. I didn't realize oh, yeah. 2.41. That was actually better than I thought. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you're, you, to me, you play Gregoriev. Uh, you know, you, you don't play Shazorkin. Uh, I, 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 I'm. Uh, what does he say? Uh, Georgie? Oh, 3.27. Wow, that rose up fast. I guess the one game against the Penguins really hurt him. Georgie. Oh, Georgie. Uh, Gorgiev. Yeah, Georgie, he, that's, Georgie, what, Georgie, that's Georgie. what he's talking oh, about. Okay. I, okay. I, still, I still think Georgie is a better goal than him. We'll see. He, he is for the long term, but they're still going to platoon them for much of this kind of year. It's a shortened season. Yeah, I know. And there's not really a lot of teams that are really sticking to one goalie a lot of the time. As good as they might have two good goalies on the team. Mm -hmm. I know, but to me, you just can't get you can't get into that momentum. You can't get into that rhythm if you're not playing all the time. Goaltending is a rhythm. It, it's a rhythm position, and when a goaltender gets hot, we've seen goalies go on these these shutout things, yes. uh, win four or five shutouts, you know, in a row. Yes. I, I mean, last year, I, I, well, two years ago with Leonard, I, I think he went on a, a shutout spree. I think he went three shutouts or four shutouts in 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 a row before he gave up a goal. So we we've seen this before. Um, as of now, it, it's, it's a very interesting argument on who should be the starting goaltender for the New York Rangers. Uh, it really doesn't matter because I don't think the Rangers are good enough to make the playoffs. So, uh, well, I, I mean, well, well, like you said before, they yeah. the NHL screwed the Rangers and the Islanders. I do. I do believe that the Rangers, the Islanders, and the Devils got screwed. Yeah, and then, then you look at where they put Tampa Bay, and they're just like destroying teams. It's not even like a competition the way, they, the way they're playing. Well, they're they playing. put them in the easiest division in hockey. I mean, yeah. Uh, when you put the when when you put one of the best and most talented teams in hockey in the easiest division, what happens? You you yeah, kill people. You we kill were, people. We were saying a couple yeah. of weeks ago too when we had Jeff Paul on the show. Vegas in their division with the Pacific Division got St. Louis and Colorado in that division. I know. St. Louis and Colorado leave a tough Central, mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden go there. Even despite Terrible. Nashville not being as good this year, like the Central has always been the bigger powerhouse of the West, and now they get the benefit of the doubt. And they're could both COVID be over already so we can move forward with this crap? I mean, I know. I don't want to. I don't want to deal with this anymore. It's terrible. Devil game, the Devil game got postponed this Saturday for the Rangers, and then another game got postponed. Right? Yeah, Sabers and Islanders got postponed yeah, recently. So the Islanders had two games that was postponed already. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, with the COVID nineteen situation, it's just terrible. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. terrible. Vegas had a long stretch too. Of I think they were waiting a week or a week and a half or something without playing until only yesterday. So what do you got? What do you got, Beef? Uh, Speedy, what do you think he should wear if he loses the bet? What do I think he should wear? Yes. He should wear a thong and a bra. I think a thong and a bra on a radio show would be perfect. Oh, God. I think and the then, fans would love to see then, Speedy. And then, and then he can put some lipstick on. Oh, yeah, lipstick. That would be good. <laughs> uh, how about me? If I lose, what do I have to wear? You? Yeah. Um... See, I'd look good with a bra. I got pecs, so <laughs> <laughs> I I probably have bigger boobs than some girls. <laughs> I definitely have a handful. That's for sure. Oh, my God. oh, no, oh man. Oh, God. Anyways, I thanks, guess Beef. You, I guess you would have to do the same thing then. I don't know. Yeah, well, we'll figure it out. Maybe Speedy will make this bet. I doubt it, but we'll but see. Well, I, uh, before I go, I, I, I do think the Bucks are going to win, but it's going to be it's going to come down to the to the wire, I believe. I uh, I think uh, I still think Kansas City is the better team, and I trust Andy Reid in a big game because he's won in a big game, and yeah. Bruce Arians never been in the big game. So I'm going to go I'm with the guy that. that's. But, I mean, I, I still think it's going to be a very close game. So. It will, uh, of course, it'll be close, and I think it's going to come down to the end. So. Well, if it does, I I I I would bet on Patrick Mahomes than I will with Tom Brady. So no, if it goes no. to that. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna bet on the younger and more talented quarterback. So, there you go. so anyways, right. thank we'll you, Beef. Happens, guys. Yes. Have a good show. Talk thank you. Beef, ladies and gentlemen, uh good friend of the show. Uh interesting to say the least, <laughs> all the time. Anyways, uh when we come back, we'll be talking to co-host Cannons of the Tomahawks uh, and Tomahawks, I'm sorry, Cannons and Tomahawks podcast on Belly Up Sports, Alex Nuttle here 
on Below the Mic. It, it is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Radio Network. Be fearless at MMA Long Island and Seituha Karate. Located at 28 Cold Court in Ronkonkoma, MMA Long Island is the martial arts school for you if you want to learn combat-proven techniques, build confidence, discipline, and self-esteem while learning real martial arts to fight back against bullies, predators, and peer pressure. MMA Long Island offers group and private lessons for all ages and levels in traditional Gojiru Karate, MMA, and self-defense. MMA Long Island is one of Long Island's most affordable martial arts schools. There are no promotion, belt, or membership fees, and family discounts are available. All classes are taught by 7th degree black belt Sensei John Benedict with over 30 years teaching experience. So whether you want to get in the ring or protect yourself and your family, MMA Long Island can help you reach your goals. Visit MMALongIsland.com. That's MMALongIsland.com or call or text 516-38660. That's 516-381-9660. You're, you're, you're listening to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. What? Oh, Gala Soul Speedy, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, I can groove to this. Uh, uh. I'm not a rapper, so I'm not going to rap here. Oh, Speedy wears a bra. Speedy wears a bra. Speedy wears a bra and dances a bra. Uh, I'm not a rapper. There you go. <laughs> As you guys know, this is Bolo the Mama. Anyways, <laughs> I tried to do that slow, by the way. As you know, this is Below the Mic. I'm your host, Errol Marks, my co-host, Speedy Petey. Remember, you can call us at 631-500-0548. Remember, you can go to our website at www.worldwidesportsradio.com. Download our app on iOS, WWSRN, or Android, Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Did you like that, Speedy? Mm-hmm. I tried to do it backwards. I, when I came back from break, I tried to go backwards, but it just came out in like a blur, you know. It, 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 but I would like to see you in a bra. It of course, be. you would. It, a bra and panties would be perfect for you. I'm I, glad you, Victoria. Enjoy maybe we'll get you some Victoria's Secret, you know, oh, underwear and bra after you lose this bet. I think oh, this would gosh. be great. I mean, you, we've got to shave the beard, you know, and put a wig on or something like that. Anyways. Uh, uh, as you guys know, uh, by the way, I want to give a shout out to Kyle Hall for joining us. Great intake of what, what he thought of, of the New York Rangers and moving forward, what the Rangers need to do this season to possibly squeak into the playoffs, even though they stink. Anyways, uh, we're now talking to the co-host of Cannons and Tomahawks podcast, Our, Alex Nuttle. What's going on, Alex? Not much, man. How are you and your family doing with this pandemic? Doing well, doing well. You know, we're all at home and the wife and both my kids are doing well, all staying healthy and safe. So that's all I can ask for. Well, that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, how old are your kids, by the way? Uh, I got one five and a half year old and a two and a half year old. So it's pretty hectic here on a daily basis. <laughs> I can only imagine. I got no kids. How old are you, by the way? Uh, I actually just turned 30. Uh, in December. So babies. You're, th- you're 30. I'm 38. I'm an old man, man. I'm a geezer. You can just call me geezer, <laughs> right? Oh, man. So uh, why don't we get into your blue jacket? So, Speedy, I asked Speedy before we were getting you on the show, uh, we, we were having two hockey guys on the show. And I said, okay, uh, who are they fans of? And obviously, Kyle being the fan of the Rangers and then you being the fan of the Blue Jackets. So what made you become a Blue Jackets fan, one? And number two, uh, what are your thoughts to the team early in the season? In hockey a ton. And the times I did watch it, it was Red Wings and the Blackhawks because those were the two closest teams. Well, then we got a hockey team close to us. I started watching and I started enjoying it. So started growing up and, you know, really liking the Blue Jackets, been able to go to games with my wife, kids and my parents and friends. Um, so it's been it's been a lot of fun. You know, I live probably 15 minutes away from the arena, so I'm able to get to quite a bit of games when we're able to actually go to games. Um, as for the season, we're underperforming, but honestly, it's kind of expected at this point because the Blue Jackets are known for not having a hot start. They usually start really slow and underperforming, and then they you'll they'll kick it up about halfway through. But you know, especially with a shortened season, we can't do that. We have to kind of find our groove a lot earlier and figure out what we're doing. 
So they just made a big trade recently, and I think a, a bargain for them getting Patrick Line and a couple extra draft picks as well in exchange for Pierre Luc Dubois, who's a nice prospect for sure, but I, I don't think he's gotten into the form that Line has gotten in his career so far. Uh, so I thought it was a bargain. What was your thought on the trade? I liked it, um, especially I think one of my favorite pieces of it, surprisingly, was actually getting Jack Roslovic. You know, he's a Columbus kid. He grew up, he's been a Blue Jackets fan, and he gets to come in and the handful of games he's played already, he's been awesome. He's been you know, forechecking really good. He's been really solid on the puck in there in the neutral zone and in their uh, the opponent's defensive zone at the times that we can get it in there. So it's it's been really nice. But especially with Line A, you know, he's arguably one of the best players that we've had on the Blue Jackets in the franchise history. You know, we've had Panarin, we had Bobrovsky, we had Rick Nash, but I don't think anyone's been such a big score like line a was and to be able to get him for uh sending pld and a third round draft pick was pretty good in my eyes and especially the fact that winnipeg retained uh, part of his salary so it essentially didn't go up for us other than when we signed that two-year contract for Ros uh, roslevic so i think it was nice especially you know line a was what number two in that draft and pld was number three uh especially with uh, Pierre Luc Dubois, he went up in the draft a lot higher than a lot of people thought he was going to be, and he was kind of a surprise. So I, I think we got Line A for a bargain, but my thing is it's all going to depend on who wins the draft. Is if we can get Line A to sign for a couple more years because he's going to be. Gonna be happen. I don't think it's going to be. Uh, I, I think he's on his way. I think he's there, but I, I think all in all, unless uh, John John Tortorella kind of gives him like. Uh, you know, that little spark or that little, uh, I don't know what you call it, uh, his personality. Uh, I, I don't see Patrick Line staying there. I really don't. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of factors with that, honestly, because so with uh, Tortorella, this is the last year of his contract. Right. And there's a lot of, you know, is he going to resign? Is he not going to resign? And a lot of interviews, uh, he has basically said lately that he's enjoyed this time with his wife and being on his farm with the dogs. He a lot of people are thinking he won't resign. So then we might have a new coach. Uh, the, the one thing with torts is he's stuck in his old mindset. That's not necessarily bad all the time, but it's more of a defensive structure. So you have guys like Panarin and Matt Duchesne and Patrick line, who it kind of hurts them a little bit because they can't use their offensive skill the most that they're able to. So do you think in terms of those players partic in particular leaving at, at times and wanting out, it started with Panarin, but also it was R with Rick Nash too, who was really the, f the big franchise icon at that time, being that they were such a young team and they were really bad before that when they first came into the ex uh, expansion league. So you think that's an organizational problem, a front office problem? Do you think maybe it's something with the, the city as a whole, or maybe it's just the fact that it's a new team type thing? What do you think is the biggest contributors to why they lose a lot of those free agents? Well, I think in the conversation, honestly, Rick Nash doesn't fall into that. And my, my reasoning being is we had a different head coach, a different GM. A lot of our front office was gone, and we were terrible at that point. I mean, we're still not great, but we've been a consistent playoff team. You know, We're losing in the first round, but we're get, we've been getting to the playoffs every year for the last four years. Um, I, I think a lot of it is – about I, my opinion, I think it's about 50 50 on Tortorella. Um, and then the other 50% are on some of these players. A lot of the guys are coming in. For example, Pierre Luc Dubois, I think a lot of it was he didn't like being in such a defensively structured environment that he couldn't use his speed and his skill and the abilities that he had to score the goals that he felt he could score. So I think a lot of it is the new age of players, if you say, mm -hmm. coming in. They, feel that they can do way more than they're allowed to do. But then also some of it, I think Torch is still stuck in his mindset of being very defensively structured, like when he won the Stanley Cup with the Lightning in 2004. So I think a lot of it is, you know, if Torch can kind of back off on that a little bit, let the offensive guys do their thing, which he has a little bit more this year. Um, but I, the city is awesome. Columbus is awesome. You know, we have Ohio State here, the Columbus crew. They're getting a new stadium in the Arena District. We have the Columbus Clippers. They're right next door. So my opinion, I don't think it's the city, but I've also lived here for 20 years, so I'm kind of biased. <laughs> um, but it, I, I don't think it's really a culture thing because 
I mean, the, the Blue Jackets culture has changed drastically since we had we got Tortorella in, you know, compared to 10 years ago when we got into our first playoff and we got swept in the first round by the Red Wings. You know, it. I don't really think it's much of a culture thing, honestly. As you guys know, we are talking to the co-host of Cannons and Tomahawks podcast, Alex Nuttle. Now, you, we were talking about John Tortorella. And John Tortorella, we know him very, very well here in New York. Uh, <laughs> Orts uh, was uh, a part of the Rangers going to the Eastern Conference Championship uh, over the years. Also was a part of the Rangers going to the Stanley Cup Finals, right? Uh, no, that was Vigneault. Uh, I'm sorry, Vigneault. That, that was after Torts. Yep. But uh, Torts had, had a lot of success here in New York. And then... He went to Vancouver. He had his problems with some of the players and threatening to kill whoever in the locker room. And then uh, he got fired over there pretty quick. And then he went to the Blue Jackets. And really, for the last couple of years, the success of the Blue Jackets come from that defensive style of game, uh, what Tortorella preaches. And I think Tortorella would be a huge loss, even a bigger loss than losing Patrick Laine in the offseason uh, if he decides to move uh, move on with his career with another team or maybe retire from hockey as a head coach. So what are your thoughts of John Tortorella as, since he's come here with the Blue Jackets? Are you surprised that Tortorella has lasted as long as he has with the Blue Jackets? Um, since he's been with the Blue Jackets, I've really enjoyed it. Um, I mean, you know, being able to go into the playoffs. Um, I was at both of the home games in 2019 when the Blue Jackets swept Tampa, and that was probably two of the most exciting games I've ever been to just being able to be a part of that culture and the environment around Columbus with everyone liking the blue Jackets so much. It's enjoyable. Um, I think it, it would be a loss if we lost torts in the off season, but honestly it's business. I mean, if he doesn't want to continue coaching, that's fine. I would love to have him stay longer, but at the same time, who knows, maybe, losing him and we could get another one of the free agent coaches that could be the missing piece that we need to be serious Stanley cup contenders because we're playoff contenders, but then we're usually an easy stepping stone in the first round. So what about the goaltending situation? We've seen Elvis Merzlikens play well at times, especially in the second half of last year. And he's the young guy. They really want to get him going in the future. He's not thought of as a top goalie prospect, like the two New York goalies or somebody like Samsonov in Washington, but he's supposed to be a nice young goaltender. Do you see him taking over maybe as a full-time guy, or do you see Corpus Allo and him platooning a lot, maybe in this shortened season? Because Corpus Allo played well, especially at the playoffs last year for, for Columbus. Yeah. I, I see a lot of the them piggybacking off of each other because I know prior to the season starting, Tortorella said that he is going to try and alternate games with those two goalies. And so far he has done that. You know, Corpus Allo one game, then the next game is going to be Merzlikens and then so on and so forth. And so far, I think that's done well, especially in a shortened season where there's not a lot of time to rest between games. There's a lot of back-to-backs. And I think that getting that extra day of rest for these guys is going to help. Uh, in, in the long run, I, between the two, I don't know. I like both of them a lot. In my opinion, Corpus Allo is the more consistent goalie. He's very quiet flies under the radar, but he's very, very consistent. But I think Elvis has a higher ceiling. Um, you know, I think he could be an all-star like Carey Price type guy if he could get his act together, but he's, just, he's not there yet. So honestly, I'm not sure, especially you know, both of their contracts are up after next season and they're both going to be unrestricted free agents. So we could lose both of them. Honestly, I don't think that's going to happen, but I'm, I'm not sure. I, I really don't know. That's the one thing that I'm, I'm confused on, but it's, there's a cloud of doubt over Columbus in regards to the goaltending in the future. I mean, we have two solid guys. As you guys know, we are talking to the co-host of cannons and Tomahawks podcast, Alex Nuttall. Alex, when you look at the Discovered Central right now and you look at the division, you have Carolina right now in the lead and se with seven games in, uh, six and one. Florida playing absolutely unbelievable hockey, maybe because of their coach, but the, this team has had so much talent over the years. They've been very exciting offensively, ve very weak defensively, and uh, over the years they've had good goaltending. Uh, Dallas, uh, what they did last year being that they're five and one. Tampa, the Stanley Cup champions, and then Columbus, who's four 
four, uh, I mean, four, four, and three right now with 11 points. Are you surprised that this division is so close and bunched together? So far, yeah. I think, m- my opinion, the Panthers are the team that's coming out of nowhere, honestly. I knew Tampa would do well. I knew Carolina would do well. And especially Dallas, I figured they would do well because they were in the Stanley Cup last year. But you know, especially with Florida, that's kind of throwing me off. Um, so far with the standings, it's it's just – it doesn't look right because Florida's been at the bottom for so long, and now they're in second place, and they're playing really good. Mm-hmm. Um, it's surprising, but I think for the most part, it's – the standings as of now is pretty expected. All right. So now dealing with like the league as a whole, with the, like the strategy of this type of season, 56 game season. Now you could also uh, relay it back to the blue jackets too, because every team's structured differently strategy wise. What do you think that are the, some of the bigger differences to having to play like the two game or three game bunches? You see a lot of the times with the schedule now playing back to backs, not necessarily more often, but a little more commonly in the beginning of the season in comparison to a regular 82 game season where they usually just play every other day. So do you think that affects the strategy a lot more? And if so, how? Oh, absolutely. I think the biggest thing is goaltending. Um, I know talking to Kyle earlier, you guys said that, or I think it he said that a lot of it's, you know, right. A goalie. And in my opinion, I, I respectfully disagree because especially with, if you have two good goaltenders, a good tandem, Mm -hmm. use both of them. That way you're not overworking one guy and letting one guy sit cold. I agree. But the issue with that is then you have situations with teams like Chicago where they have Kevin Lankinen, who's on fire right now, and he has been playing almost every single game. And then Malcolm Subban is sitting on the bench you know, doing who knows what. So it's one of those things that, especially with goaltending, each team is going to be playing that differently. But I think it's you need to make sure you're not overworking a goalie because then you know, if you're overplaying Lankinen and he gets hurt, now what do you do? You're going to play Subban and have more goals scored on you? <laughs> um, I I like the addition of the taxi squad this year. Uh, I know we, they kind of had to do it, especially with all the all of the COVID precautions and protocols. Mm-hmm. But I do like the fact that you know they're traveling with the team, they're practicing with the team, so it makes that quick and seamless transition of oh well, we had one guy go on COVID protocol. All right, so we have to bring a guy up from the taxi squad. So I think a lot of that is good in terms of being able to manage your depth and your workload for the guys, especially if you have one guy who's playing constantly and if he gets bruised up one game and you have a back to back or you can take him out and let him get an extra day of rest. Um, it, even with the salary cap, you know, they're having to manage the salary cap all while doing all this at the same time. So especially in the shortened season, there's a lot of different things that they have to focus on, especially with, you know, the goalies and having, making sure you have enough defensemen and enough forwards to be able to fulfill what you need to do to get to the playoffs and ultimately win the cup. Now, Alex, when you, you look at the blue jackets right now, and, and again, uh, the playoffs are so messed up. I, I don't like how uh, Gary Bettman, I love what he did with the round Robin last year going to, I think they had it all right. I think Gary Bettman absolutely nailed the playoffs uh, before before you can get into the playoffs, you have to get through the round robin. Once you get into the round robin, you make the playoffs, and and really the top what four or five seeds make it automatically. Mm-hmm. What I what I don't like this year is in each division, three teams make it, and there's one wild card team that can make it out of each uh, out of one division or two divisions. So what throws me off with this is over the years, you know, there's the Metropolitan Division, there's four divisions. Now you have all these divisions and you can only get there's only three teams out of each division that can make it and maybe one or two wild card teams. Do you like the the structure of this year's um um division setup and 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 what Gary Bettman did for the NHL or do you absolutely can't stand it and you think Gary Bettman's trying to rework the wheel and try to change what the NHL isn't? Um structure simply put I hate it. Um I think Gary Bettman is doing what he can. So we had a season in the first place, especially limiting travel and being able to try and consolidate 
areas. So especially like in the New York area, you have the Rangers and the Islanders and the Devils and the Sabres and all of those teams in one area. So there's not a lot of travel going on. The Then having just the solidified Canadian division, you know, so they're not traveling over the border and we're not traveling over the border. I, I get it. I understand from a business perspective and trying to get the season going, but at the same time, I don't like it. I mean, the one thing that I like that I've never understood is how Blue Jackets and Detroit, I mean, we haven't been in the same division for a handful of years. Why, you know, there feels like they're 10 minutes away and why they weren't in the same division. Then you have you know, Tampa and Florida in our division and Pittsburgh and Philly aren't. It doesn't make sense. I mean, the East is by far probably the best division by out of everybody, but I get what he was doing. I think it could have been done a little bit differently, but at the same time we get hockey. So I'm not complaining too much. Detroit should have never moved, been moved out of the East in the first place. That's I think the bigger problem I definitely went with that. No. So I, two, two part question here. Number one, what was your reaction last year when you saw the 85 save performance in the playoffs, even though they lost the 85 save performance with Corpus Allo in the playoffs, which I thought was unheard of. <laughs> They broke the previous save record by 12 saves, which was pretty impressive. So that was number one. And number two, the, the big upset against Tampa in the 2019 playoffs. What was your reaction when you saw that? And like, how much confidence did you have in the beginning of that? Was it, was it still a chance that you thought they had? Was it like, all right, we're glad we made it type thing. And then <laughs> when did you start to feel confidence within the series too? So I'll start with the 2019 series. Um, so for the Game one, I actually was at a watch party downtown with my wife and we were sitting there watching and we started watching the first period and there were, I'd say 200 people in this little bar. We were all watching. So it was pretty loud. So we started watching. They scored the first goal. All right. Got a little quieter. Then Tampa scored the second goal, got a lot quieter and they scored the third one in the first. Okay. Well, no one's talking at this point and everyone is just getting alcohol. Okay, well, great. This is going to be terrible. So we ended up watching that. And then Nick Felino scored in the second period of that first game. And then as soon as David Savard scored, uh, he had a nice little dangle around Victor Hedman in the third period of that first game. It kind of started clicking like, maybe we can do this. You know, who knows? It might go six or seven. I had absolutely no idea they would sweep. I mean, that. I think that's cool, especially with them being the, uh, you know, they were the best regular season team. They were the President's Cup winners. Like it, it was, it was really cool. Uh, being able to go to Game Three and Four of that series was awesome. That's the loudest I've ever heard Nationwide Arena. It was probably one of the best experiences I've had in terms of hockey. Um, last year, the, well, not last year, the last playoffs where we had that five overtime game, uh -huh. that was frustrating so it was a i believe it was a three o'clock game and i was actually still working i was working at home and i was still working so i turned the game on had no idea i was going to be watching hockey for six hours the same game um it, it was last year yeah it was awesome i mean corpus solid played out of his mind it was a really cool game and it just came to a point where i was hoping somebody would score i didn't care what team I just wanted someone to score so the game would be over. Wasn't that against the Lightning? Yeah. 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 I think the biggest surprise of that was seeing Seth Jones have over an hour of ice time. I think it was like 62 or 63 minutes of ice time. Crazy. And everyone's saying that he he was a monster. He's like, oh, I, I could go again. I mean, we could continue playing this right now. It It just blows my mind to see how much ice time that man had. And then how much work Corpus Allo did. And he looked cool as a cucumber, like nothing faced him in the world. And right then and there, I knew that, you know, we would be fine, even though we lost, uh, we won the next game and then lost three more. That's fine. But, you know, I going into last year, the biggest issue was our goaltending. We had no idea what was going to happen. And especially after that game, I felt very confident. I felt fine with having uh, Corpy and Elvis. Before we let you go, um, I have one quick question for you, and I want you to tell the fans how they can find you on social media. Yeah, so you can find me on Twitter at a nuttle underscore cbj. Uh, you can find our 
podcast, the Cannons and Tomahawks podcast at Cannon Hawks Pod. And then you can find all of the other stuff with us and other people like Kyle on Billy Up Sports. Mm-hmm. So my fir- my last question for you is, if you were to choose on one of these New York teams to root for, who would it be? The Islanders or the Rangers and why? Oh, I like both teams. Uh, if I had to choose one, I would have to say probably the Rangers. Oh, my yes. God. Wow. So good, good, good. Two things. What? All the, all the ex Blue Jackets come here. So, you, you know, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> so I, I think the biggest thing from that is, you know, granted, Panarin, but I still like the guy. Um, I like Mika. For with me, the biggest thing was uh, Lundquist. You can't hate the guy. And no matter what team you are, I've always liked him and had respect for him, even though, you know, he's been he played in New York for 200 years. But it's it's one of those things that I if I had to choose, it, it would have to be the Rangers by far, because at least they did something different with the reverse retro instead of the Islanders just getting a one shade darker and then calling it a day. <laughs> Alex, I did like you. Now I'm I'm starting to push away. I'm trying. No, that's to, fine. It's a bubble now. Oh. Right? You, you've you have upset me now for the rest of the show. But that's fine. We'll see you next year. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, thank you for joining us. We'd love to get you on again uh, as the season progresses. Awesome, guys. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. We were just talking to the co-host of Cannons and Tomahawks podcast, Alex Nuttle. I did. I I, I will say. Nice guy knows his uh, knows his hockey. There's no question, but he's wrong. It should be the Islanders. All a lot of ex Blue Jackets on the Rangers. He has a good reason for that. Even even not guys that weren't even superstars like Broussard when he first came over there. Brandon Dubinsky when he first came over. You're there. not a superstar, Speedy. Okay, I'm not a hockey player either. So I was. <laughs> I know. Mm, so, okay. So what happens? What happens to that? Should I smack you around on the show? That doesn't matter. Should I smack you around on the show? <laughs> they all knew that already. Yeah. So I, I think you need to be smacked around. I really For what do. reason? I don't know. You should be beaten up. Uh, maybe we uh, tie you to a desk and, and and take a couple of swings with a hockey stick. You know, you have no reasoning behind that I, I whatsoever. Think be, I think it would be good. I think it would fill in all the anger and disruptions I've had all day and just take it out on you. Good. You can get a mannequin and do the same thing. <laughs> A mannequin. Well, guys, uh, we're actually going to end the show a little early because I got a meeting, a conference call for our network. So uh, we will be back next week. Uh, stay tuned. Listen to the Weekend Crunch on 103.9, the LI News Radio Network FM dial here in Long Island if you're at, based out of Long Island. If not, you can check it out by going to uh, iHeartRadio, LI News Radio. You can listen to the show on Saturday night at 7, you know, 7 to 9 p.m. on the FM dial. Uh, if you miss it, uh, you can see that you can listen to the replay on our uh, app. You go to the podcast part of the app and you can listen to the replay of the show. Um, uh, I'd like to thank Alex uh, Nuttle for joining us. Kyle Hall for joining us. Uh, the beef calling up the show. All the fans that stay tuned and listen to us every single week. Uh, shout out to the hit list this morning. Uh, Austin and uh, Jared show a great, great show. We have a great lineup of great shows throughout our network. So uh, stay tuned and listen to all the shows as we move forward with the network. Until then, this is Errol Marks and Speedy Petey saying we'll talk to you Monday. Good night, everybody. You're, you're, you're listening to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Edward Lehman has been a trusted insurance advisor for over 16 years with insurance solutions for auto, home, commercial, life, and retirement. He's located at 54 Sunnyside Boulevard, Suite H in Plainview. That's just 1,000 feet south of 495. Local agent, local advice. The time to think about insurance is before you need it. So do yourself a favor and before you pay your next insurance bill, give Ed and his team a call. 516-935-3900 or visit them online at www.allstate.com forward slash EL. Edward H. Lehman Insurance is your trusted insurance advisor.